So there is an emphasis, especially in hard times, on what du'as should we make, what prayers should we make, what supplications should we make, which ones are the best ones for this situation and that situation. And of course, you know, we start off with this uh, idea, and this is this is an established fact that the best du'a is the one that's from the heart, the best supplication is from the heart. And when we talk about the prayers of the pious, no one is more pious than the prophets, and therefore the prayers of the prophets are the most pious prayers. The Prophet ﷺ said, Shall I not share with you all the first supplication, that if a person says it, then all of their prayers will be answered? And just as the Prophet ﷺ was about to say that, a Bedouin entered into the gathering, he interrupted the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ became preoccupied with talking to that Bedouin and addressing him, and we never got the prayer, we never got the supplication that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. So Sa'id was too embarrassed to say to the Prophet ﷺ, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you forgot to tell us what it was. So he said, so I followed the Prophet ﷺ home after that gathering, and uh, I was hoping he'd take note of me behind him, and just as he was about to enter his house, he said that I made a noise with my foot on the ground. So I kind of struck the ground. It's like someone walking behind you and clearing your throat, clearing his throat, right? So <clears throat> to catch his attention. So he said that the Prophet ﷺ uh, said, uh, who is this? Is that Abu Ishaq? Meaning Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Is that Abu Ishaq? So Sa'id radiallahu anhu said, uh, Na'am ya Rasulullah. He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. Then he said, I said to the Prophet wasallam that the reason why I followed you is because you were about to share with us the first supplication and you were talking about the amazing reward of the supplication. And then that Arabi came, that Bedouin came <clears throat> and busied you with him. So you didn't get a chance to share it with us. So the Prophet wasallam said, yes, that is the dua, that is the supplication of the noon of Yunus alayhi salam, the Prophet Jonah. He said that is the supplication that he said as he was in the belly of that whale. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walimin. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walimin. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walimin. There is no God but you. There is no God but you declaring the oneness of Allah. Subhanak, you are free from all imperfection. Inni kuntu min al-walimin, and I was amongst the wrongdoers. Again, la ilaha illa ant, there is no God but you. Subhanak, how perfect are you, free from all imperfections, and how imperfect am I? Inni kuntu min al-walimin. I was from the wrongdoers. When he said that, the Prophet wasallam said, and this is the most important part of the hadith after the dua, he said wasallam. No Muslim will call upon his Lord with that prayer at, at all. Qat. Okay, so there's no exception to this. So if someone starts thinking, well, I'm not Yunus A.S., I'm not worthy of my dua being answered. I'm not. The Prophet said, no believer will call upon Allah with that prayer, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illa stajaba lahu, except that Allah will answer his prayers. No Muslim will call upon Allah with that prayer, except that Allah will answer his prayers. Think about that for a moment. Now we've talked about the different ways that Allah answers your prayers, but no Muslim will ever add into their prayer or call upon Allah with la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al except that Allah will remove all of their distress and answer their prayers. Now let's talk about this for a moment, inshallah ta'ala, because it's a very profound thing that the Prophet ﷺ is giving to us. Number one, again, don't sit there and think, well, perhaps I'm not worthy. All right. The Prophet ﷺ said, no Muslim will call upon Allah with that prayer. Also remember that when Allah tells us the story of Jonah, the story of Yunus salam, Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And just like that, we also rescue the believers. So just like we rescue Yunus salam, we rescue the Prophet Jonah, كَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That's how we rescue the believers as well. With their words, with that expression, with that sincerity. Yunus salam represents a person in the lowest of low, calling upon Allah, acknowledging His majesty and His glory with absolutely no imperfection. So Yunus alayhi salam is at his lowest point, and he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Ibn Mas'ud anhu said, in the darkness of the night, in the darkness of the ocean, in the darkness of the belly of that whale, 
Yunus alayhi salam calls out from the bottom of the ocean, La ilaha lanta subhanaka inni kuntu min al It's an extremely profound narration that the Prophet sallallahu is giving to us. And I want to talk about a few things with this dua that are, that's usually not spoken about. Number one, Yunus alayhi salam did not uh, ask Allah to be saved, but by his pure expression to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his pure thana, his pure praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah saved him anyway. Allah rescued him anyway. Yunus did not ask Allah to remove him from the belly of the whale. He did not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him in this life. He called upon Allah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And that's because the Prophet sallallahu said that whoever sticks to istighfar, whoever sticks to seeking forgiveness, Allah will take care of all of their affairs anyway. Okay, Allah will take care of all of their affairs anyway. And so he didn't even have to call upon Allah and ask Allah for the specific uh, saving and rescue that he was asking. It was just a complete comprehensive, oh Allah, you are perfect, I am imperfect. You were always generous to me and I am consistently deficient in my responsibility to you, right? The acknowledgement, Abu, and, and you know, you think about Sayyidul Istighfar, the, the, the master of seeking forgiveness, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, the chief of Istighfar, the chief of seeking forgiveness. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu bi dhambi. Right? Admitting Allah's blessing upon you and admitting your shortcoming towards Him. Okay? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al So no one is, is excluded from this because kathalika nunjil mu'mineen. وَلَمْ يَدْعُوا Muslim And no Muslim, no believer, no mu'min, no one calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, period, with this dua, except that their dua is answered. How Allah answers it, that's a different story, right? But there is nothing that you could call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more pure and more beautiful than with this dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, you know, he did not say, let this be your only dua, add it to your dua, let it be frequent on your tongue. And at the same time, add it to your dua. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us to keep our tongues moist with La ilaha illallah and all of all of the variants of La ilaha illallah. Uh, so La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulku wa la alhamdulillahi wa ala kulli shayin qadir. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al You start from the place of La ilaha illallah and then you go to the next part. And this is the dua of the one who is in pain. This is the dua of the one who is in the lowest of low. This is the dua of the one who is anxious. And no one makes this dua sincerely except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer it and remove that which they're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Now I want to add something else to this, which is very powerful. If you look at how Allah responded to Yunus alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued Yunus alayhi salam in more ways than one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Yunus even what he had not expected when he made that dua. Because Allah's answer is always better than your expectation. All right. In the case of Yunus alayhi salam, he was just asking for forgiveness. Allah forgave him, Allah elevated him, Allah saved him, Allah returned him to his people, and his people who caused him to flee were now coming towards him and had now come to him as believers. So again, Allah saved him, Allah forgave him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him, Allah chose him, Allah elevated him. Okay? So Yunus alayhi salam after this prayer, after this incident was better than he was before it. He was better than he was before it. He went up a notch, went up a station because of his repentance. Allah saved him. Allah gave him what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned his people to him as believers. Yunus alayhi salam did not expect all of that, right? But the purity of that supplication if it is said purely, is so comprehensive. And that's why the response of Allah was comprehensive, more comprehensive than Yunus Aysam could have possibly comprehended himself, right? So Yunus had no idea the extent to which that answer would come. And that's how we should be as well in terms of trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worry about the sincerity of your supplication, not the wisdom of the one that you're supplicating to. Worry about the sincerity of your request, not the capacity of the one that you are requesting from. Allah will do his part, you do yours. So again, no one calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al except that they are responded to. Make this a daily habit of yours, add it to your existing prayers. Let your tongue be moist with La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah lahu mulku wa alhamduhu ala kulli shayin qadir. Let your tongue be moist with La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Let your tongue be moist with La ilaha illallah throughout the day. 
and let your heart, let your heart be softened with those words. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that one God that we call upon to rescue us from all of our hardships and to elevate us in ways that we could not have imagined, in ways that we are not worthy of being elevated. But Allah is most merciful and most gracious and most wise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us throughout all of our moments, through our hardship and through our ease, through our difficulties and through our most blessed times. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. Jazakallah wa khayran. Thank you all very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. As you guys know, our channel has been demonetized by YouTube recently. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.